Hey everybody, welcome to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob and this is the fifth episode in my second Age of Wonders 3 co-op strategy series. And uh, we're just going to continue moving right along here. It's been about a week since we last played, so bear with us as we catch up. Um, I've got a few comments to go through this week, some really excellent comments this time around, stuff I had no idea about. Um, but let's, I'm just going to be going through these in order here that I uh, wrote them down. Arch Redbeard uh, mentioned that I should probably consider putting a city near the two hearts of the glades, uh, which I think he is talking about these two right here. That's not a bad idea because there's enough other structures around that that would make for a pretty decent city. And those would be a total of 20 extra casting points, plus the uh, inflict bleeding wounds to all produced units in those cities. So I should, uh, that would be a good spot to set up another city. And I think I will do that as soon as I'm building another settler. Um, which actually should probably happen now, now that I think of it, because I've got, yeah, I have produced merchandise set right now on this city, but I think I'd be a lot better off making a settler. Uh, here we go. All right, so I'm going to do that. Um, the He also mentioned that might be a good idea to get a laboratory, and I don't, I think that might have been an old comment from the third episode. No, I, yeah, I do have a laboratory in here now. Might have been referring to this city. Uh, eventually I will want to... No, I have a laboratory there too, so sorry, never mind. That's a little comment, I think. Um, Derbert, he mentioned the Necromancer does not incur a race governance penalty from declaring war. And uh, this is something I'm going to need Jake's help with here. Um, I was holding off on declaring war on these halflings down here because I didn't want to ruin the halfling race governance because the race governance penalties which you can see, or the race governance bonuses, which you can see here, are normally affected by declaring war against independent cities. Um, what I had no idea about was that those penalties just don't apply to the Necromancer. Um, you can see here, if I highlight it, it says prepare to be destroyed, minus 50 align it, minus 150 relation. That relation is specific to the city, not to the halfling race governance overall. Other players would get a penalty for that, but I don't because I'm a necromancer. I don't really know why that's the case, but I can use that to my advantage here because I can declare war on them without slowing down my race governance upgrades. Um, to do that, though, I or to actually cast Undead Plague on them, I'm going to need Jake's help. So, Jake, can you go ahead and move your, uh, your swimming unit down there to just see the city? Be able to see the city center? Can you see it now? Uh, no. One more? Yeah. Hopefully you're not trespassing or whatever. Okay. okay. Nope. So now <clears> I can friends. go ahead and, uh, yep. These guys are in trouble because they're about to have a very nasty plague. It is time I'm for I'm not the... a very good friend to them. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you said we were friends, but obviously I'm not you're a You're clearly good not a very good friend. As right. I'm helping you curse them. Let the great halfling civil war begin. No! <laughs> what are you doing? And now, and now we're at war. So now I can do this. And they're getting eaten. And it doesn't matter because it doesn't make any of the other halflings unhappy with me. And it doesn't affect me. So nope. We're good. So do you need me there anymore? Nope. That'll just sit there absorbing <laughs> their population and feeding the growth of my cities which is going to be helpful now that I'm building settlers. Um, all right, so that's that helps me out quite a bit. I really appreciate that comment because I had no idea that was even a thing. Um, the next thing that I wanted to point out came from Arch Redbeer and Tarsac. Both of them came to different conclusions about destroying uh, corpses, but if it's specifically a gold cadaver corpse. Um, Tarsac seemed to have actually tested this, but I'll try to remember to do so myself. He said that even if, like, for example, if uh, my gold rank cadaver, who is over here, if he died, he as resurgence would normally come back at the end of the battle. But if he dies and another cadaver eats his corpse, I didn't think he would come back. Tarsac told me that he does, though. Um, Arch Redbeard said he didn't think they did, so I'll try to remember to test that at some point. Uh, if I can get another cadaver into that army anytime soon. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention, uh, one more comment came from Tarsac. He told me that healing is applied from the left to the right in a stack. I had always actually wondered about that. I, I didn't really know for sure. I kind of 
suspected that might be the case or it prioritized higher tier units, but it's kind of both because if you look at a stack of units, the higher tier units are on the left, closer to the hero who always leads the army with lower tier units on the right, which is why cadavers will always be last. This is a problem for cadavers because as this guy is healing all these other, oh, any ghoul units ahead of him, the cadaver is last to receive healing, which can be bad because they can die from decay. So you kind of want to micromanage your cadavers if you want to keep them alive and there's a lot of other wounded undead units in the stack. Um, the good thing to note is that the healing bonus is applied before the decay happens. So, um, actually, I'm not sure. I would think, though, that if that if that was the case, I think there might be an exception for cadavers, because I would think if the healing bonus was applied first, then you could never get them more than uh, their max health minus eight at the start of a turn. But maybe there's some exception for them. Uh, but I do know he was saying that they won't die if, like, it has hate health and your unit has healing. Another unit has healing. It should keep them alive. All right, so all that out of the way, um, I guess we can continue moving along here. So oh, now I have extra um, food income, I guess. And I'm going to send this cadaver over towards my other army to kind of help them, or to hopefully test that out if possible. One more turn left and I can make them a vassal, which I am going to do if I have enough money. Actually, probably won't. While I'm here, I'm going to want to go ahead and do this battle. I just did a, ba a very bad thing, so I'm going to do a good thing and let those guys run. Try to keep that neutrality as long as I can. All right, and then there's... Okay. I was moving down here to go after the uh, this quest for the city-state. I'd forgotten about that. And I'll go ahead and say hello to these people here. Pick up a little extra gold. I might need this to buy that city-state to vassalize it, depending on whether, of course, they might give me a quest or something, but I generally don't like to assume that that's the case. Okay, this time I'm not going to be an idiot and let those chargers flank something. I'm going to remember how far they can move. <laughs> <laughs> Go forth, my minions. This is actually a really kind of a nice setup for me here. I got like a wall I can hide behind. Try to keep them out of the way. Okay, they're not going to be able to get quite out of the way. This should work. Alright. Okay, that's from Shrine to the Guardian Angel. I was like, why do my cadavers also have regrowth? All right, I should be able to... I'm gonna wanna go after these guys with the Pony Riders, I think. There we go. So these guys have projectile resistance um, that apparently doesn't apply to magic attacks, which is why I wanted to attack them with this guy instead of the Yard this hero instead of the archers. Um, cadavers are at max health, unfortunately. So I can't actually eat anything with them for a little extra XP. It doesn't really matter, though, because they're already at gold rank anyway. Okay. Upgrade my leader. So I'm going to want... Uh, I'm going to want Control Undead, because I never know when that's going to come in handy. Probably a little extra resistance. Just to round that off to 10. Um, one last thing I want to do before the end of the turn is probably start summoning a Lost Soul, because my uh, Eagle Scout died. 
Oh, wait, I have enough casting points to cast this because I got some extra. Well, we may as well use it. I'd been looking for a city to cast Undead Plague on for so long. Watch me find one, like, super fast with my Lost Soul. Now that I've already started feeding on the halflings. Not unless those cities are like heart crystals last night. <laughs> we were playing Terraria, and I'm not very good at finding heart crystals. <laughs> He's the worst. <laughs> no, as I soon as I ditched him, I found like four. <laughs> we played for like, I think we played for like two hours or something. We no, we we played for a lot longer than two hours. We were probably than two hours. We were probably hunting for heart crystals for two hours. Yeah. I found one. Everybody else found like at least between five and ten, and I found one. <laughs> It was it was humorous. Um, I thought I had turned on quick movement. Okay, I guess it is on. It oh, is? it's it's just on the world map that units don't always move fast. I guess I was thinking my lost soul was moving unusually slow. So yeah, I'm not I'm not very good at finding useful things in Terraria. I'll also learn from uh, Evan that apparently fishing is OP. You get all sorts of good items from fishing in that game. It usually is in games like that. Yeah. Bardu Valley is kind of the same way. You can find some absurd stuff in there. Even in Minecraft, you occasionally like randomly find enchanted books and stuff from fishing. Or you set up an auto farmer and walk away for 10 hours and come back with three full chests of enchanted books and stuff. That works too. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the iron you could possibly want. <laughs> Jake gets some much deserved revenge on the Frostlings after last episode. You're gonna have to remind me what happened last episode. They killed your jester. They didn't like the fireworks. Oh yeah! That was rude. It was very rude. I don't want peace with you. Wait. It's a dark sun, and I have just a regular scouting unit. I can see like two spaces. This is the worst scouting ever. I'm gonna stay in the. Oh water, yeah, so I forgot we me. had that stupid sun going on. Yeah, that's why you had to move your hero so close to that city to be able yeah. to see. Yeah, makes sense. Ooh, right, scales of fortune. Polar spire and a crystal tree. Actually, I don't know if I should start casting Scales of Fortune yet. No, I I want to make a reanimator. Alright, let's see what we got here. Produce reanimator, that's going to take two turns. So I should probably wait to cast Scales of Fortune for a couple turns, because I'm not actually making units yet. Maybe better to summon another lost soul or something, I guess. This is a pretty easy looking magma forge, all things considered. You don't have to deal with any, right? any guns or any flamers. Nightmare can be kind of tough, but it's also really predictable. It'll just pretty much run right up whatever it can hit and can do the most damage to. <laughs> that was a fumble. <laughs> that was a fumble and your knight still wrecked the poor little thing. Yep. Well, it is a tier 3 human knight versus a, like, draconian baby. <laughs> So you're not the only one fumbling. That one actually did quite a bit better. Fought back they got a little lucky. bit. Uh, you have fire protection, which kind of helps here. But I think I would... 
It's tough to say what you should do, because if it went crazy after another unit, it might... Well, no, I think you'd be okay if you defended. There you go. Now it can't really do much of it. It can hit you once, but that's it. can it. hit me once. Yeah. Yep. And even if you didn't get rid of all of its XP, it would have still taken quite a bit of damage from that. Root Spears hurts. Yeah. That was planned. Hmm, should I sign a peace treaty with the fairies or just take them by force? You should leave the fairies alone. But I really, really want to take them over and tell them what to do. But I want them on my side. Uh, you might... They're more of a magical being anyway. I guess you can have them. I actually truly do kind of need the fairies. Okay. They're one of the few units I actually build. Trying to decide what to do with that army that I got over there in that area. Because I missed one of those. When I was running past them, I kind of missed one of those um, heart structures. I need to go back and clear it. Is it just me or this exactly the same army Jake just fought? Um, Indeed it is. It is. Two hatchlings and a nightmare. It's a parallel universe above and underground. That's the nice thing about a gun. It doesn't matter if you use up a bunch of movement points beforehand. Did that in the wrong order, but it works. <laughs> Uh, that dwarf will probably serve. Yeah, he'll survive that. Especially if they fumble. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. I may as well clear that shrine to the guardian angel while I'm up here. Um, you know what? That's a fairly tough battle coming up. I will take the bonus from this and then go clear that. Then go clear that other heart structure. Eesh. That is two elf longbowmen. That's not good news for the halflings. Dodge. Yeah, that's what I have to hope for. Everyone's it's what they're good at. Yeah, but I don't have their happiness up to where I'm going to eventually have it yet. I'm trying to figure out how much damage. I got a little poison damage bonus against the longbows, but I'm not going to be able to kill them. All right, I'll keep these guys behind there. Health longbows are very tough. They can do a lot of damage. Those crusaders are just dancing on my screen. <laughs> They're dancing? Yeah. <laughs> it kind of looks All but like one. it. All but one. He's, just, he's very obstinate. He just doesn't want to join the crowd. Hmm. It looks to me like they're all dancing. They're all getting into it. <laughs> Four of them are. Two of them are like, nope. It all depends right. how close I zoom into them as to whether two, four, or five. Oh, now all six are. Huh. Don't you kill my fairies. See, if that other longbowman didn't die, I'd have lost those guys. All right, how about some that butcher knives one. to the back? There you go. And 
get rid of some action points, I think. Oh, come on. Baseball problems. Oh, those are halflings, too. Kill them all. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, now it's necessary. I tried to tell you to do it first. <laughs> no, of course, Bob doesn't listen. Now he has to deal with the consequences. Well, my cadaver's gonna come back, though. I don't have to deal with any consequences. In fact, I can just reanimate him here. And now he has... Oh, I thought he was gonna have full health. Can he devour? Is there any corpse under me? No, that's too bad. All right, fairies. Oh, I could have healed him with the... Dang it, I could have healed him with the... Uh, with the brew brother. Oh, it doesn't matter. They have regrowth now. They should heal all their health before the next battle anyway. All right, I need a unit that will heal by itself. Here we go. Get him out of the battle. Get him in with this group so he'll heal. I don't want that other cadaver to die yet. Okay, now my other necromancer can get control undead. Which you never know when that'll come in handy. This guy's the guy who's gonna use for more of a melee fighter, so I kinda need to get lifesteal on him too. For now I'll bump up his defense. I have no idea what to do with the Halfling Night Watch I just built in this city. <laughs> he has no meaning scout. or purpose. Then turn him into a scout. Well, at least he wouldn't die like the cadavers do. Like, slowly dying away. Well, for now I know what I want to do with these people. So, let's go make some friends with the humans. This is like an army of half-living, half-dead units. They seem to get along pretty well. thing about cobbles is you don't even really need a good shot at them. They go down really fast. Ha, they can't move. Oh, they can't move very much. Cadaver, but I can get it back. Ooh, double level up back to back. Okay, I didn't think I was going to be able to end that battle on that turn. That should complete the human's quest. Or, no, sorry, that's elves, not humans. I sold the Union Guard for money because I already have one with this group. Oh, wait, no, I have one with my other group. Probably should have taken that. Oh, crap! No, that was the peace treaty 
I clicked the wrong button. I just declined peace, and now I have to turn around and pay for it. I think I make, like, <laughs> 10 gold, because I think I I sold it for, like, 80 gold. And it costs 70 to make peace, but I basically just threw away a High Elf Union card. Dang it. Oh, whatever. I want to make friends with the elves. Kind of wondering if I should have just taken him over, but I need to keep my alignment kind of good. That's the one problem with playing a gray guard. You kind of have to choose what you do based on, well, and really with any class, any morale based class or alignment based class, you kind of have to choose, pick and choose what you do based on that, and you don't always get to do what you would otherwise like to do. Um, I kind of want to auto combat this one, but those horses have fire damage, so that's probably not a good idea. It's about the time you auto combat is when things go horribly wrong. I should be using Bestow Iron Heart. Get him, guys. Uh, let's see. These cadavers could still use XP, so we can take that. And I definitely want to level the Necromancer if possible. I think I'm going to raise another corpse. <clears throat> well, I was going to give XP to the Theocrat, but... I guess the archer can just steal it. Now this is kind of a tough call. Somewhere down here I need to build a city in this area. There's a lot of structures. There's a ton of structures down here. I just need to kind of figure out where exactly a city should go. Alright, I've got enough for these armies to split up, I think. I'm going to send one west to clear some of these smaller structures. The other one can get, like, these mines along the coastline on the way back, I think. Who wants to go with who? The cadaver's pretty clearly going to need to go with the necromancer. I'll probably give them the... Give him the boar. Alright, they should be good for now. I'll send this group back up the coastline. They'll be able to maybe get those gold mines. They're pretty good units. Yeah, I'm gonna grab Sacred Arms since she's got a kind of since she's leading her own army now, and maybe maybe touched by faith. All right, I have to decide what to do with this Night Watch. Maybe Jake is right. Maybe he should just go running out into the wilderness. I'm sorry, can we have a repeat of that? <laughs> That's maybe, okay, he's got it recorded. Maybe. True. Just me. It's going on the internet, Jake. So <laughs> it's going to be my new ringtone. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Do 
I have the ability to go across water yet? I don't think I do. I don't have basic seafaring yet. Alright, for now, since these armies just split up, I think it would make sense to send him back to help this army clear these structures here. Oh right, I got a Brew Brother coming back too. Excellent. Alright, I'm good. These armies should be able to handle themselves just fine. One last thing, I do not want this spell yet. I want to get one more Lost Soul. Wait a second. No, actually I do want that, because I can start making reanimators on the next turn. Alright, cool. Uh, did I just get pure evil? Oh, okay. Sweet. You're already pure evil? Yep. Congratulations, I guess. <laughs> Way to be evil. Good job. I do what I can. Alright, now I can make reanim... I can't make reanimators. What am I missing here? I thought you made those with the Necromancer's Dark Tower, so... Oh, why can I not make them? I'm missing a structure, I think. Oh, More fireworks. Panicked Half it. Halfling Jesters are playing a pretty big role in this game, it seems. Lunch. Hmm, never mind. Adventure of the Night Watch and an Eagle Rider. Um, how is this happening? The what? little halfling jester corpses, like, laying, floating in the air above that hole? Um, magic. That's weird magic. Levitate corpse? Who says magic has to make sense? I guess. I guess that's why there's wild magic in this game. Ooh. Rude. That was close. <laughs> that animal slayer for halfling adventurers is really good. <laughs> I bet they would have killed it if they'd actually done a regular attack with the Eagle Rider instead of Wing Beat. Possibly. But now the Eagle Rider is has a giant bite mark in his face. <laughs> and more halflings continue to die. <laughs> Magic Tome of Counter Action. Wait a second. Huh. Oh, wait, these are the Tigrans I already met. No, I don't want to make peace with them. They're feeding me. They'll probably ask for that every now and then. Okay, enables production of a reanimator in cities with a necromancer's dark tower. Then I should have that. I want to get Essence Harvest. That's a nice thing to have. Oh, okay, there you are. I just didn't see him at first. Alright, I want several of these guys. They're a major part of my overall strategy. I'm gonna go ahead and build three for now. Where should my first city go? Maybe I should... Maybe I should go for these things, these two structures first. Actually, this one's going to eventually be in the border of that elf city. Alright. And that elf city is going to get... be able to make archers that have inflict bleeding wounds, so that'll be kind of nice. Since I can't get the uh, empire upgrade for being a druid. I think that this structure would be nice, but my first city, I gotta go back here somewhere. There's so many structures in this area that could be an economic boost. I'm gonna go back. And 
fact, what I want to do here, I think I can reach, yeah, I could reach that with the settler on the next turn. So I'm gonna go like this for now. Save those haste berries so I can get a settler down here a little faster later on. Since I have the, uh, since I have this guy coming down, I'll split the boar off and put the brew brother with this stack. He is going to be very helpful. I could have maybe gone after this. I wasn't thinking I was strong enough to clear an ice structure. One of those uh, Hall of the Forefathers. Now that I think of it, my units are all undead. They have frost resistance, 40%, so they'd probably have been okay. But I'm a little too far from it now. I'm not going to worry about it. I want to get over here and clear some of that stuff first. My fourth city is under my control. Excellent. Ice. Unfortunately, it dropped in population size as soon as I got it, but eh, I can, it's going to grow again next Plus, turn. So. Speaking of cities being under my control, I can make a vassal of these elves. Actually, so not technically under my control, but what did I just... You got to be kidding me. You misclick again. I did misclick. I meant to click What'd exit. I meant to click exit on the elves that I just paid to vassalize, and accidentally click declare war. <laughs> okay. From what I've been hearing, you've been doing that a lot lately. I'm I accidentally uh, stealing from somebody causing a war. <laughs> that was different. <laughs> <laughs> that was civilization with Matt, and it was an accident, but it was a different kind of accident. And I got blown up with nuclear weapons because of it. That's another story for another time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just threw away a bunch of money. Okay. Well, I'm at war with them, so I guess I'm just going to go kill them and take their city. That resolves what I'm going to do with this army. If I was playing single player, I'd probably have reloaded this turn, but not in the middle of a recording. I'm just going to have to deal with it. My gosh, I am struggling today. They need to have like, okay, so when you click the prepare to be destroyed button, especially on an ally, there needs to be like an are you sure prompt. <laughs> because we get are you sure prompts all the time in games and usually they're just annoying. That would be a really useful one to have. Jeez. If any developers are watching this, please add this to the game for people like me who aren't paying very close attention to what they're doing. <laughs> Whatever. I'll just go kill the elves and take their stuff. And it'll still technically be free. <laughs> it might, might be a little bit quicker, too. Yeah, it actually will, because I would have had to wait for the vassal. I would have had to wait a certain number of turns to actually absorb them into my empire. As opposed to having them just be a vassal. Alright, let's see if we can avoid any more catastrophes. <laughs> uh, speaking of catastrophe, that bear looks like a catastrophe waiting to happen, so I'm going to have to be careful here. Let's, uh... I kind of want to butcher knife that boar. Charge. No. I already learned from episode 2 that that doesn't work. <laughs> you just did it wrong. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, let's get my necromancer hero out of the way of that angry bear. Seems like a good good starting point. Bears have so much movement too. All right, I can do this. I protect the brew brother brothers that way. I shouldn't move the Union Guard that far over. Uh, that Union Guard might die. I don't know. I don't think the fairies can hit him to do enough damage. Uh, 
This is gonna have to be good, I think. Okay. Only wanted your hero there. Yeah, they did. The cadaver was like, no, go away. Alright, well, I know what I want these guys to do. Use that animal slayer to your advantage. And cadavers. Yeah, I'm just gonna butcher the bear to death. Cadaver should be able to one-shot that guy and then get the other one up in the face. And now I need to get this hero out of here. Can't heal himself, but that Brew Brother will be able to heal him on the next turn as long as the fairy doesn't suicide itself on the cadaver, which it probably will. Oh, if it can. Wouldn't it have to go all the way, or can it phase through? Oh, it might just straight up melee attack it. And it's not going to do very much damage oh. if it does. Yeah, okay, never mind. I hear what you're talking about. That's it probably crunch. will. Yep. That's too bad. Alright, elves, I'm sorry that I have to do this to you because I know this really isn't your fault. <laughs> but sometimes accidents happen. He does not have forestry. If I split him off, he's going to be separated from the rest of that army. I don't really have anyone that can... Oh, the Union Guard can do it. So, let's not let him get sniped by that thing. Don't kill him! Okay, uh, next turn I should be able to get that next city. I'm gonna go ahead and get Undead Plague ready to cast in case I find another hostile city out here somewhere. Also, I might want to rethink that plan because I have no mana. <laughs> I'm losing <laughs> mana of like 28 per turn. Shame on. Yeah, I know. I'm being I'm being judged by the sorcerer, of course, for my lack of mana. I think that I will get more by taking this city though. So let's go ahead and do that and then see where I'm at. Okay, I don't even need him here. <coughs> Hello there. My sincerest apologies, but everything you own is now mine.
let's go ahead and I've got plenty of options to deal with him. May as well give everyone a little extra XP. three cities now. Still not quite caught up with Dan, but maybe soon. As long as I don't <laughs> accidentally declare war on these other elves over here. <laughs> Found some hostile tigrants. Where? Over by my wisp. Off to your west. Holy crap. Uh... Look at all the water places in one spot. Oh, dang. You aren't kid. Oh, I'm getting... Really? Oh. You you want your city back, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Minor points for bravery. <laughs> but minus points for stupidity. <laughs> it's a fine line. You net zero points. <laughs> Does anyone else need healing? Uh, the fairy, but she's the only unit that's not dead. So... You mean undead? Well, yeah. If she was the only unit that wasn't dead, you'd be in some trouble. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Being undead is a weird thing. It's hard to explain. Uh, Go get her. Walking corpse. I think that pretty much explains it. <laughs> oh dear, now you're in trouble, aren't you? Okay, now the city is... Nope, they still got one more unit out there that'll probably come running in and try to recap it. They're just gonna go one at a time, I guess. And take turns, be polite. I cannot afford to make anything in this city right now, so that's going back to merchandise. Still want to keep this as elves. So I will say Ghoul City. I still have to wait to ghoulify the city, unfortunately. It's another four turns. Hmm, an arch druid. What did you guys get for your next heroes? Rogue. rogue. Uh, we got a, another uh, Draconian Dreadnought, so we're re-rolling that one. Okay. I already have a Draconian Dreadnought and a Draconian Archdruid, so I need something that's maybe not a Draconian. <laughs> I, I would appreciate that. He's just gonna. Re you, you got the fire resistance covered at least. Yeah, I. Yeah. I got a halfling druid, which seems like a pretty good fit for me. I wouldn't mind having another halfling hero to take advantage of the bonuses I'm trying to get. But I can't pay for him right now because I'm poor. Would you like some money? I can wait one turn. Okay. Actually, I might get some money from fighting maybe on this turn if there's any other structures I can clear. Oh, jeez. No love for the monster hunters. One of your dwarves needs to just hop on top of that boar and take control over it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of awesome. It should be like a dwarf ability, inherent racial ability. Can mount any boar. Well, 
won't be able to mount it anymore. Nope. Okay. Okay, here, pick this up. Alright, now my settler can move that much further. I need to decide exactly where I'm going to put this thing. It's kind of hard to you know, this seems like a map that's going to have quite a bit of water. At least there is near me. If I put a city on the tip of the peninsula to the southwest, I could take advantage of that stone quarry there and make pretty good ships. I think that's what I was kind of planning on doing with this city, though, anyway. I'm thinking maybe this spot right here. Gives me a lot of gold mines, and I think that be. I need to count those spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it wouldn't quite reach that gold mine down there, but I could put a fort down there for that later. All right, well, that's the general direction my settler needs to go for now, I guess. All right, let's see what kind of units I can pick up. When did Inspire Loyalty these get disjuncted? <laughs> Sometimes huh. those are sneaky. Must have been the dreadnought that did it, because I think that's the only one we've met. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe that was the alert that it said it cast to mana cells or something. It was actually disjuncted something, and the game just moved. <laughs> that might have been hit. <laughs> Although that was before we even met them, so no. it was the turn we met them, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the turn or two before that, I guess. Ah, uh, okay. Once again, Elf Long Bowman. Versus halflings, not not a good thing for me. Recast that and get another forty gold per turn. This is actually a tough battle for five units to handle. Let's do this. I think all of my units are going to walk away from this battle alive, but we'll see. Okay, I don't think they can move, because I don't think there's any way that these units can turn me around. So the Longbowman should be a non-issue now. Which means I can focus on saving my hero. There we go. You might want to get behind everybody else. Extra firepower from the horse, finish those guys off. I'll give the Night Watches some XP. They've just been sitting in the city this whole time. They need to get out and explore the world <laughs> and kill things. 
Oh, that's where I got the little XP from, or extra research from, and I uh, got Reanimator a little faster. It must have been Whispers of the Fallen. Okay, Halfling, Brew Brother, Tiger, and Shredder. You know, I can make Brew Brothers. I, I don't really want to recruit one for 160 gold. That seems kind of expensive. So I'm not going to do that right now. Actually, I cleared that tree already. I'll bet anything this guy comes after my city here. So I'm gonna save the movement and not run down there to engage him. I am wondering if maybe I can go in that dungeon, but something tells me I'm not quite ready for a dungeon yet. I'll at least spy it out and see what's in there. Probably on the next turn. All right, well, before we do anything else, we're coming up on an hour here, so I'm going to wrap it up for this episode, and then we'll probably just go right on and record the next one. Um, Jake and Dan, is there anything, any updates you wanted to to give about kind of what's going on with what you're you're doing? Not just really. conquering the underground, slowly, but steadily. Dan likes to keep it simple, but sometimes simple is the best way. <laughs> just kill things and take stuff. All right, well, sounds good then. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut this one off here. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and we will see you in episode six.